Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about calculus. You can see the title. It says, what's so special about calculus? And what we're looking at right here is calculus notation. So uh, for those of you out there who have never, uh, never taken calculus, you know, you might be looking at this and be like, I am completely lost. You know, I have no idea what this means. It's so complicated, I'll never be able to understand it. Well, that is totally not the case, okay? If you have a kind of a basic sense of mathematics, basic level math, I'm talking like middle school math, you'll be able to understand uh, some of the things I'm gonna talk about in this video, which is just gonna be a fast, quick introduction to some of the reasons, or really just one of the reasons, why calculus is awesome. Now, before we get going, uh, if some of you out there think you have an idea what calculus is about or why it's so cool, go ahead and put that into the comment section. That'd be interesting to see. If some of you are like, oh, I don't know, I just know it's a pretty hard math that I, I hope to never have to take, or maybe some of you actually want to take this course, I would definitely encourage all of you out there that have an interest in calculus to actually take the course. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, mathematics. As a matter of fact, we couldn't even have our modern day world without calculus. And some of you out there might, wow, that's a stretch. You know, this guy's trying to blow up calculus to, you know, so big. Well, no, I'm really, really serious about that. Calculus solves, you know, really so many problems that other mathematics uh, simply can't. But anyways, I'm going to explain all of this in just one second. Also, before we get going, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the uh, description below. And if this video is exciting and you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me just say one thing uh, before we get going here. My most advanced course at this time is pre-calculus. So uh, I don't have a full calculus course, although I intend to create a basic introduction to calculus kind of mini course but uh, I have a full comprehensive pre-calculus course. If you are getting ready to take calculus, you certainly need to understand pre-calculus before you get into calculus. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and get into uh, what calculus is all about. All right, so let's start off with this little problem right here. And uh, now this looks kind of complicated, but it's really not that difficult. What we have is a triangle right here, okay? So now, of course, we have this line, it's in this plane, but if I just showed you this triangle like so, it's a right triangle, and its base is six, and its height is six, we can calculate the area of this triangle by using a lovely formula, and that formula is the area of a triangle is equal to one-half base times height. Now, this is stuff that you would learn like in the fifth grade, middle school, basic, basic geometry. Now, the reason why I'm kind of showing you this triangle problem in this manner, because I'm going to circle back and do this problem again using calculus. You'll understand uh, why in just one second. But what we have here is an XY plane, and we have the line right here, Y is equal to X. It's basically a 45 degree line. And uh, we can measure this side. This is from zero. This goes out to six. So this uh, base, okay, this dimension right here is six. And because y is equal to x, this is also six right here. So when I'm trying to find the area of this triangle, I just simply go, okay, one half base times height. You can see that would be one half uh, times six times six, or one half times 36, which of course is 18. Okay, so the uh, area of this triangle is 18 units uh, squared, right? So we're talking about area. So 18 units squared. So hopefully, all of you out there were like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. And again, you know, even if you have some basic level, you know, math skills, you should be able to understand this problem. Now, why was I able to do this problem? Why was I able to figure out the area of this triangle? Okay, well, let's talk about that right now. Well, we were able to figure out the area of this triangle because we knew the formula for the area of a triangle, okay? So when we're talking about area, if I'm like, oh, I have a triangle, oh, here's the formula, area equals one half base times height. Well, as long as I got the formula uh, for that particular figure, then I'm good to go as long as I have the respective information, right? So, uh, you know, you know that was just one example with a triangle, but if I see a circle and I want to find the area of a circle, I have a lovely formula for that, area equals uh, pi r squared 
if I see a rectangle or square, I can find the area of that by the lengths times width. Okay, so area, finding the area of various figures is pretty easy when we have the formula, right? So we've got the formula, we can find the area, no problem. Well, what about a situation like this? Now, this is where it gets interesting. So some of you might be saying, well, listen, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't want to do this problem. Uh, that just looks a little bit complicated. But some of you might be saying, well, how about just give me the formula, right? What's the formula uh, for this shape, right? Now, this shape here is called a what? Well, I don't even know the name of this shape. You can just make up a shape called a squiggly or whatever you want to call it, right? This is not a basic figure that we're kind of used to. We're like, all right, all right, how do I find the area of this? Well, this is one of the major, major problems that calculus solves, okay? Calculus can find the area and volume and surface area and all kinds of crazy stuff of any figure, okay? So this is the real, real power of calculus. So how that works, of course, is a little bit, you know, a little technical. I'm going to show you a basic example here in a second, but this is the problem calculus solves. We're like, well, I like to find the area of this thing. I don't have a formula. How do I do it? Well, we're going to use calculus. Now, let's go ahead and see exactly uh, how that would work. Okay, now I'm not going to do this problem, but I'm going to set up this problem uh, in a way that anyone can understand. All right, so let's suppose I'm, I'm looking for the area of this blue region right there. So right here, um, let's just first discuss this curve, okay? This curve right here. So we have a curve. This uh, specific shape in, in uh, algebra is called a parabola, okay? It's a U shape right here. But we can describe this curve, okay, mathematically by an equation, okay? What we call a function. It's just an equation. So y equals x squared describes this curve, okay? So this is the equation. This is the graph of that equation, okay? So don't get too, you know, like, um, you know, let's say, uh, you know, concerned, like, well, how did you get this? Don't worry about that. You'll learn this stuff like in algebra. This is like basic first year algebra stuff. But just know that this um, equation describes this line, okay? Now, let's suppose I wanted to find the area under this curve. And look at like, my little uh, xy plane. Let's say you can see this uh, area or this shaded region bounded by blue. It's underneath the curve, and it's bounded by the x-axis and the y-axis. So it starts right here from 0. This is 0 on x, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So it goes out to 0 to 4, okay? So if I go from 0 to 4 underneath this curve, that defines the area of this right here, okay? So in calculus, we can write this lovely little notation right here. This is what we call an integral, this little squiggly shape. It looks like a little a long S, uh, and that's actually what it's an elongated S, but it's an integral symbol. So calculus, we're like, okay, I want to find the area of that. So we're going to write an integral and then go from 0 to 4, 0 to 4, and then this curve right here is x squared. y equals x squared. We'll put that right there, dx. And then we would go ahead and do a little bit of number crunching with this little notation. And like magic, we'll get the area of this region right there. Now, some of you are saying, well, yeah, you're skipping a lot of steps, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You know, you're, you know, this is not intended to be a full calculus course. But the way you actually simplify an integral is not that complicated. Okay, there's different rules and it can be complicated with more sophisticated problems, but the general idea is not that difficult. Okay, so again, if I want to find the area of anything and I know the curve of it and I want to find the area underneath that curve and I know kind of like, you know, from where to where, you know, I could just write an integral and then just do the number crunching on it. So let's uh, see an example of how to actually do the number crunching of an integral so we can find the area of something. So let's go back to our lovely problem. Okay, so I said in the beginning of this video that I was going to use our lovely triangle here as an example. Okay, so now here we have our curve, which is actually a straight line, y equals x. Okay, and I want to find the area of this triangle from 0 to 6. Now, I explained in the beginning 
<clears throat> excuse me, that the area is going to be 18, right? 18 units squared. So we already know in advance that the area is 18. But this time, I'm going to do this problem using calculus. So it's going to be like, whoa, this is going to be pretty cool. All right, so we're going to find the area underneath this line, okay, underneath this curve. It could be a curve. It could be a line. It could be any shape. So we're going to find the area underneath it. Uh, this, what we're talking about is x from 0. Okay, we're going to start from 0, and we're going, uh, we're going to go out to 6, okay? And you can see that uh, this underneath this curve, this line, is the area that describes this triangle. So I can just simply write an integral, okay? So let's find the area. So we'll write this little crazy shape. This integral from 0 to 6, or 0, this represents our starting number. 6 represents our ending number. Now, what's our curve? Well, it's actually a straight line. That's x. So we'll put that x. And then we write a little dx right there. Uh, this is important, but you know, you learn all this in a real deal calculus course. But uh, you're going to see uh, in just one second how easy it is to actually evaluate uh, an integral. Okay. Again, this is obviously much more sophisticated when you do more challenging problems. But watch this. We're going to get this answer uh, 18 in just one second. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to go ahead and do the number crunching on uh, this integral. So we're going to find the area underneath this curve, x, okay, from 0 out to 6 underneath it. So here is how it works. So in calculus, you have different rules, okay, that uh, allows us to what we call evaluate an integral. So x is really x to the first power. Okay, so we have just have an x by, uh, right here. It's not x squared like that uh, parabola I was showing you. An x is the same thing as x to the first. We need to see that exponent. Okay, so x to the first. So here's the rule. Okay, for this type of problem, all we need to do is add 1. We're going to add 1 to our little exponent. So from right here, 1, we're going to add a 1. And what's the answer? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. So we're going to divide by the answer. Um, and the answer is the sum of that exponents. Okay, so let me explain this again. So we're going to take that uh, x to the first. All right, we're going to add 1 to it, which is 2. And then we're going to divide by that answer, which, of course, is 2. Okay, so again, x to the first plus 1. This whole thing is equal to 2. So we're going to uh, take that and divide by 2. All right, so this thing right here... Uh, when we did our little uh, crunching, number crunching here, well, our little basic uh, uh, inter integral, evaluating an integral. And I don't want to get too technical uh, here. Uh, just kind of stick with me. When we did this, we got x squared, uh, x squared over 2, right? So I just explained that. So what do we do with this? Well, let's go ahead and see the next step. So right here, we have the integral 0 to 6 x, right? This is um, telling us, hey, find the area underneath that line uh, that goes from 0 to 6, right? That, that triangle that we just looked at. So we did this, and it turned out to be x squared over 2. So now we're going to evaluate this right here. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. In calculus, what you do is you take this thing that we just found, and you're going to subtract it from itself. So it's going to be x squared over 2 minus x squared over 2. Now, again, I'm giving you like a little procedure, a little recipe. You know, nothing, it's, you know, there's multiple steps, but it's nothing too complicated. Hopefully, I mean, if you know how to like bake a cake or, you know, if you know how to cook a nice, lovely meal, you're like, oh, I got to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. If you know how to follow directions, you know, that's all I'm giving you right now. There's hopefully nothing overly complex here. So we're going to take this, okay, and we're going to subtract from itself. And this is basically the way it works in every calculus problem. Now, what we're going to do after we do this part is we're going to take this top number, 6, and we're going to plug it in for x right there. And then we're going to take our bottom number, 0, and we're going to plug it in for x right here. Okay? So again, we're going to take this uh, top number, 6, we're going to plug it in right there. And we're going to take this bottom number, 0, we're going to plug it in right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So... This is going to be, uh, x is going to be replaced by 6, so that's going to be 6 squared over 2, minus this x is going to be replaced by 0, so that's going to be 0 squared over 2. So what's uh, 0 squared over 2? Well, that's just 0. This whole thing kind of gets, uh, 
you know, kind of taken out right here, right? Zero divided by two is zero. So all we just have to do is figure out what six squared over two is. Well, six squared is what? Six times six, which is of course 36. So that's gonna be 36 over two uh, minus a zero, but 36 over two is what? 18. There you go. That is the area of that triangle. Let's go back over here. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that is a lot of work to find the area of this. I'll just use the formula. Yes, indeed, I would uh, definitely agree. Use the formula when you have a formula, okay? But, uh, you know, in this scenario over here, you do not have a formula, right? So we're going to have to use calculus. Let me just show you real quick just to kind of get this going. And we, if we wanted to do the same problem, right, uh, let's go from here. So that would be 0 to 4x squared dx. So this x squared would be what? Well, I would add 1 to it. So that would be x cubed. So 3 is my answer. I'm going to divide by 3. Okay, so if I wanted to find the area there, I would just take my x cubed over 3 minus x cubed over 3. And... Uh, for this x, I would um, plug in a 4, and for this x right there, I would plug in a 0, right? So here's our setup, and when I do this number crunching, I would actually get the area for this shape, okay? So hopefully, this little video gives you a sense of why calculus is so uh, special, so awesome, and this is just a small kind of aspect well, not too small because calculus in, in terms of integration, um, maybe like half of calculus, like an introduction to calculus, um, kind of conceptually you can kind of think of half of it being solving problems, finding area, finding volume, finding distance uh, along certain paths and whatnot. That's a huge, huge problem that calculus covers and its applications are infinite in terms of science and engineering, et cetera, et cetera. So indeed, if you um, you know, are gonna be going off to college, you know, if you're like, well, why would I take calculus? Well, if you're gonna um, you know, uh, major in any kind of science, technology, uh, engineering, mathematics, even some you know, business finance courses still use calculus. So calculus has a wide range of applications and it is a very, very special mathematics. Hopefully you'll take it one day if you're up to it, but before you get to calculus, you got to master that pre-calculus, which is a pretty challenging course in and of itself. But uh, with that being said, I hopefully, you know, kind of motivated you to continue to learn mathematics as math is such a beautiful language and it could just really its applications are infinite. But uh, anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.